Good evening and welcome to Inside Kennedy Football, your weekly look inside the Eagle football program. My name is Josh Powers. Coming up on this episode, we will talk to the head coach, Kedrick Williams, about the big Kennedy win on Friday, 41-28 to in a rivalry game over Richfield. We'll talk to assistant coach Eric Vetch as well. And in our players segment, we've got Valiant Taylor and Marquez Monroe. And we'll also preview Kennedy's upcoming home game against Mount West Tonka Friday night. You can watch that live on BEC TV, 7 o'clock at Bloomington Stadium. The head coach joins me now, Kedrick Williams. Coach, congratulations on your first win as a Kennedy High School head coach. How did it feel for you? How did it feel for the team to get that win over Richfield on Friday? Uh, thanks, Josh, for having me today. And very exuberant, very happy. Uh, monkey has been lifted off the shoulders, all those cliches <laughs> that they talk about. So you guys travel to Richfield. It's a rivalry game. You know it's going to be heated. But it's also a team that you've had some success uh, with in past years. So how did you maintain your focus and execute for a you know two-score victory on Friday night? Well, this week, well, last week, I'm sorry, we really focused on effort and attitude again, our two positives. But also focused on the rivalry and understanding that this side of 494 is ours. It's not theirs. Understanding that the battle that we were really incorporating, the battle of Nicollet Avenue, all those cliches we had put together, it was real. It was a real to set the mindset for where we were going into. Let's talk about offense first because you could see the offense really growing from week one to week two. And watching the game back, of course, I was covering the Jefferson game, but watching it back, the just looked like you guys continued that momentum. You guys ran the ball for over 350 yeah. yards, yeah. which is always a good sign, of course. And you guys were also productive through the air. So just talk about how your offense was able to click so nicely. You know, Josh, that's something we've been focused on. It's a little bit more balanced. Didn't quite realize the numbers were that different. Uh, we did pass for over 100 yards also. Mm -hmm. Our first opening score uh, was a passing touchdown by our quarterback, Jesse Falk. Something we've been working on is balance. You know, everybody knows we have a dynamic runner in Theo Simmons. Uh, but just getting our other weapons the ball is, uh, is another thing that we've been focusing on. Defense as well. Uh, some great numbers in this game. Richfield, a team that's been scoring a lot of points this year, and quite frankly, you held them down to just yeah. 28 points. And yeah. that included under 50 yards rushing for yeah. them, and their yeah. quarterback completion percentage was only around 40%. So right. it looked like the numbers anyway, you guys were – executing on defense well. Right, again, something we focused on all week, Josh. You know, we've hung our bread and butter on run-stopping defense. We've done that now for the last two years. Uh, we are working on stopping that passing game, but in every defense, there's a hole. Mm -hmm. And it's all about what we're going to give up. We're going to give up, you know, small passes, keep everything in front of us, and then buckle down and play defense. Well, we talked about offense. We talked about defense. How about special teams yeah. too, Coach? Yeah. Special yes. teams yes. contributing for a touchdown? Yes. Talk about yes. the big punt return or punt block that you guys had and the return after that. Right. That was something, again, we worked on. A couple things that special teams are. We got a two-point conversion this week off of special teams. Uh, we got the punt recovery, block punt recovery for a touchdown this week off of special teams. We also had a long run by our freshman superstar, Marquez <laughs> Monroe, who you'll get to talk to in a little bit. He had an 80-yard punt return. Uh, so, again, it's the things that we focus on throughout the week. You know, special teams coach Eric Vetch, who you will meet here in just a moment also. Uh, those are the little things that we preach on a weekly basis. And now you're starting to see after game three some of those things come into play. You talked about the special teams, but three big plays on special teams. I mean, when you can have that, those kind of plays for you, that – dramatically increases your odds of winning a football game, doesn't it? It really does. And we talk about the third aspect of the game, which is special teams. No one talks about it. You may spend only a little bit of time on it, but it's something we emphasize strongly. The time that we do spend on it, we emphasize success. We emphasize execution, whether it be kicking the ball off away from their best returners or whether of us getting to return yards and setting the offense up for a great field advantage. Talk about Jake Houston in this game, Coach, uh, what he did offensively and his contributions as well on special teams. You know, Jake's contribution to everybody that they saw was offensively, defensively, but most of all, Jake is our team captain. We go with Jake Houston. And the great thing about Jake in this game especially, he kept looking at me and telling me, Coach, this game is for you. And I'm just really proud of Jake for that because no matter how many errors we made, Jake would look at me and say, don't worry about it. And that's the kind of team captain you need. And no matter what happens, happens. He's cool, calm, so the other boys are cool and calm. How about Jesse Falk, too, Coach? Yes. He's been splitting time a little bit with uh, the pre uh, resurgence of uh, Avante Monroe at quarterback, but mm -hmm. how great was it to see him scoop up that punt in a key situation and take it to the house? You know, Jesse did some good things. Like I said, he threw his first touchdown pass. 
uh, things that people were not expecting. But Jesse is getting better week by week. That's why we keep continuing to trust in Jesse while we continue to put Jesse behind center. Uh, Jesse is our future. He understands that as a junior. He understands that this year is a building year for him. Uh, Vontae has done a great job in practice of sharing and splitting reps with Jesse. And now you see those two kind of talking a little bit. Not so much as a competition, but giving each other pointers. And that's really what we want. Last one for you, Coach. Uh, anytime you run for over 350 yards, yeah. we, we, we could talk about Theo Simmons. We all know mm -hmm. what kind of a player he is. But when you have those kind of numbers, the big boys up front. Yes. Talk about your offensive yes. line and what they did in the trenches. Something we haven't always been able to talk about at Kennedy High School is our O-line. So I definitely want to give them some praise. Uh, we now give out some helmet stickers. And we had four linemen this year we receive helmet notification, you know, recognition stickers. So awards there. So that's huge. You know, we talk about the games won and lost up front. So I'm glad that those guys are finally buying in now. Uh, they're understanding their importance and their dominance, and they're receiving some recognition for it. Coach, great to talk to you after a big win. Congrats yes. again on your Thank first you. win as Kennedy's head football coach. And hopefully we'll keep that streak going. We'll talk to you about the game on Friday night against Mound West Tonk in our last segment. Look forward to it. All right, that's the head coach, Kedrick Williams. Coming up next, we'll talk to assistant coach, the special teams coach. They had a big week. Eric Vetch joins me next on Inside Kennedy Football. Back on inside Kennedy football, the Eagles one and two after defeating Richfield on the road 41-28. The Eagles head back home on Friday night to take on Mound West Tonka. Game starts at seven o'clock. You can watch it live on BEC TV or head on out to Bloomington Stadium and cheer on the Eagles in person as they look to climb to 500. Assistant coach Eric Vetch joins me once again. What's happening? Not much, man. How you you seem in a good mood this oh, week. I'm in a good uh, you're in a, I would imagine you're in a good mood because yeah. of what your specialty teams unit did on Friday night. I mean, they they played lights out. They gave me everything they got. They gave us all. They gave Coach K everything they had. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there are guys that say, I need a breath. I'm like, no, I need you. And they went out and they did their job. It was nice to see. Have success on the special team side of the football. It's kind of forgotten. You know, some coaches don't really pay much attention to it. And we've made an onus this year on, on making sure we cover it during the week and then running it again on Thursdays before we play, and then so we're ready to in, and prepared on Fridays when we go out and hit the field. So, What are some things that you do during the week to prepare for specialty teams? How, maybe how much time during practice do you spend on that portion well, of the game? It, it could be about a half hour, half hour on mm -hmm. Tuesdays. Wednesdays we'll spend maybe 50, 20 minutes, and then Thursdays we'll run through our, you know, a, a, a script that coach comes up with, and he just calls for people. We won the toss. We're going kickoff. Let's go. And and the kids got to kind of make sure that they know where they're at and who's on kickoff and stuff. So it gets them really kind of focused on the, in, on that mindset of like, hey, we got a game, let's go. Um, we've been doing that this year, which has been very beneficial. And other than that, it's just watching film to see what other teams do to scheme. They like there's certain things that teams will do on punts, kickoffs. Like our first two weeks, n none of the kickers they could kick the ball to the end zone if they wanted to, but they just squib kick it all the time. They just didn't want anybody to return anything, and so they basically gave you the ball in the 35 and 40 and hope their defense could do well. Um, you know, there's teams that do that. There's teams that will just kick off because they don't really spend much time on it and don't study you. I mean, if anybody studies us, knows that we got about five or six kids that can return the football, mm -hmm. so I don't expect them to kick off to us very much or punt to us very often. So, Talk about the blocked punt. Was that a was that a punt block that you well, called, or was that just kids well, making a great well, play? Well, no, I mean, it, every week it, it, it kind of started with them on a bad snap, you know, so mm – -hmm. Like, like Jake probably would have held up there a little bit, but he saw it was a bad snap, so he ran in there. Um, but we do, like, I will look at the, the punt formation of the other team, and I will call a certain play that we practice on Thursday, and that's going to be, like, our block, all right? That's going to be, if, you know, you guys are going to go block the punt. These guys are not, and we, we just will run certain certain stunts or certain blitzes just so we can make sure that uh, 
that we try to block up every, every kick without giving up too much and letting them pin us deep and stuff like that. I want guys back to block. So, But it ended up being a play where Jake just read it. He read the bad snap. We had pressure coming from everywhere. And uh, the kid picked it up, tried kicking it, went off his shins, and then Jesse picked it up and took her to the house. So it was kind of it was kind of cool. I mean, to have a special teams touchdown. Usually, in the past, they've kind of been against us, but this year, we've kind of reversed the role, So it's been cool. So, you guys have had some big punt returns as well. One went to the house last week. What? How? Have you worked on that a lot in practice? Second part of that, you've got a freshman back there returning punts. Yeah. That's an added dynamic to with a ninth grader in a key special teams if role. You, so talk about that as well. If you see, if you see Marquez back there in games, and, and you would have saw him at home um, back there, you'll understand that even though he's a freshman, he's got a lot of moxie. He's got a lot of a lot of nerve, and he, and he can he he doesn't think about it. He just does it. So it's fine for him to catch a punt and take it and. We don't. We try to bring a blocking scheme, but in punts, it's kind of it's more of a it's more of a hot mess, right? So, <laughs> like you can put a scheme in, but only half your guys may get there because it just is. It's man on man, basically, just finding seams. And, and Kaz has just got great vision and great ability to find seams, create seams. He makes the first guy miss a lot, which in in a punt is helpful. Mm -hmm. And uh, be honest with you, the onus is on him for finding those seams and, and working his way down there because it. it like I said, unless. He, they outkick their coverage, and he can just basically beat them to an edge, which is hard to do in a punt. You, you mentioned, know, yeah, you mentioned it, it on, works, kick, so. on kickoff return, coach, that uh, you guys have some dangerous weapons back there. Yeah. Do you coach those up guys on fielding those squib kicks and maybe calling for that fair well, catch? If we've, they, if we've they had, had, we've had to work short? on that because of the first – and Fridley, we, we had a few kids, like, miss those. Mm -hmm. And so we, we basically had talks with them and, and have kicked to them and stuff like that in practice. Coach K will have on our kicker. He'll – have them kick it all over the field so they're ready for anything. That's the biggest thing is having them ready for anything. Onside, um, pooch kicks. Like the Richfield kid had a nice kick this last week where he, he got it high up in the air in kind of a hole that we have, but everybody's got a hole, right? He found ours, and the ball actually checked up backwards, which it almost cost us, but we were able to get on it. So there's coaches that spend a lot of time on special teams, and I, I was blessed to be around one of them when I was at Edina. The guy, like he was a special teams guru, like, would just mess with people i mean like <laughs> and did it for fun it was like fun for him and, and i kind of like to do that stuff too so if we kick it somewhere and they adjust i like to kick it where they're not you know and see if we can't get the ball back because that's what it's about and the kids have fun with that too it's really fun for them to be able to do different things all the time and not just be robots so well, special yeah. teams has been a big part of Kennedy's season so far. Congrats on yeah. the success Thanks. against the Richfield. Yeah. Continue the great work, and yeah. we'll see you on Friday night. Sounds right. fantastic. Thanks, Josh, for the time. I appreciate it. All right, that's assistant coach Eric Vetch of the Eagles. Coming up, it's our player segment. Stick around on Inside Kennedy Football. so proud that I serve my country. I can't imagine not having Wounded Warrior Project in my life. We need Wounded Warrior Project to help us in our ongoing recovery. My family learned that they weren't in this by themselves. Wounded Warrior Project definitely saves lives. I am living proof that this organization works. Back on Inside Kennedy Football, the Eagles head back home on Friday night to take on Mound West Tonka. It's a 7 o'clock start, live on BEC TV. Player segment time now. We've got a newcomer and we've got a returning vet to the show. We've got the freshman, Marquez Monroe, and we've got senior, Valiant Taylor. Guys, thanks a lot for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. Valiant, you've been on the show before, did you give this uh, young man here to your right some pointers before going on air? Yes, I did, and I hope he remembers. What'd you tell him? Oh, um, I told him just remember, <laughs> just remember everything that I told you, and yeah. <laughs> Want to talk to you a little bit about Richfield? 
Big rivalry game for you guys. Yes. How did it feel to get a big win against a team that uh, coming in the season, you got that game circled at the beginning of the year? Yeah, it was great. And having it at the beginning was a, was huge for us, that win. We're really hoping to build off of that in the future. How about you, Marquez? It's it your felt, first game against yeah. Richfield. Uh, how did it feel to get that big win? It felt great just because they're our rivals, and we beat them by like two <laughs> touchdowns. So it felt good. You're part of the big boys up front, mm -hmm. Valiant, and you guys, you heard the numbers probably from earlier. You guys rushed for over 350 yards in this game. How is How are you and the group able to be so successful running the football? Really just practicing that in practice all the time. Really, it The games really are won up front, and we know that, and we're really owning it, and really just pounding, pounding, pounding. You helped lead the way for that big Theo Simmons 64-yard run, so what did it Feel, what did you see on from your perspective as you watched Theo get to that second level, and then you probably knew it was uh, pretty much over with at that point. Yeah, Theo's super fast. I'm just I just love seeing him run right in front of me every single time. It feels great. Marquez, you're a freshman this year. How in the world? Because it doesn't happen very often. How in the world have you been able to be so successful as a freshman football player at the varsity level? Cause I like my mindset is like I'm not scared of nothing. Like yeah, I do. I play for my brothers and. That's all I got to do, and don't be scared. You just said you play for your brothers, meaning the football team, but you also yeah. literally have a brother on the team, of course, uh, yeah. senior Avante. So what has that relationship been like for you guys? How has he kind of coached and brought you along, and how fun is it to play with your brother uh, on the same team? It feels good to play with him just because that's my brother, and we get along. And, yeah, he, he told me a lot of stuff like like uh, coverages and stuff. It feels good to have him with me. We saw you a couple weeks ago make a big interception. Last week you had a big punt return. You were this close to getting in the end zone. But uh, how have you been able to be uh, so productive? It's one thing just to see the field, but mm -hmm. you've been able to make some big plays already in your Kennedy career, and you're only three games in. Yeah. What's been the key to that? Uh, just go out there and like don't hesitate to do anything. Just do it. Yeah. If you get it, if you don't get it, go at least. I win 100%. If I get it, that's good. We were talking to, uh, off air before the show. You were playing eighth grade football last year. 365 days later, you're going up against seniors in high school. What has that transition yeah. been like from that perspective, just the level and the speed and the how big the kids get? I don't have to yeah. tell you, kids grow a lot between their eighth grade <laughs> and 12th grade year. Yeah. So what has that transition been like, like for you? It's like a fast tempo. It's like more physical. Yeah, it's like. But, like, I'm not scared. Like, just know I can do it. All right. What do you have to say about uh, this freshman here, uh, Valiant, and what, is been, what he's been able to do so far this year? Super proud, of course. It's his first year on varsity, and he's doing great so far, and it's really great having him on the team. How about you? We, we've talked to you before. You took a year away from football. Uh, how have you been able to come back after a year hiatus away from the game, and you've been so successful on the field this year for Kennedy? Yeah, I'm very fortunate for that. I do feel like it has, I've been pretty doing a good job. I've just been very aggressive up front, you know, technique we've been practicing in practice and just keeping my head straight, yeah. How about practicing today, guys? Did you practice today? We did. Yeah. How, how was that? It was uh, 88 degrees and humid. Did you get plenty of water? I can't imagine. Yeah. Uh, practicing on a day like today, but it looks like you guys survived. How was it from your perspective? Yeah, it was it was hot, Re very hot. I have a gallon of water with me right now, still recovering. Yeah. How about you, Marquez? It, it was hot. Yeah, right. hot. What do you think this uh, win can do for you guys? Obviously, it gets you your first win of the season. Marquez, there's still five more games left in the regular season. What do you think a win like that can do for your team as you guys continue to move forward? It can give us like more momentum and like success to go into another game and we can do better and better. And Valiant, I'll ask you the same question, but I'll add on something. Not just the win last week, but what you guys did in the second half of the game the week before, you guys really seem to be picking up momentum at the right time. Yes, things are going great offensively with Coach Cooper. We're doing a great job really putting up points on the board, and I'm really happy about that and excited to see what we can do in the future. All right, guys, it was good to see you again, Valiant. Nice to meet you, Marquez. Thank we'll you. Uh, see you guys on Friday night. Best of luck this week. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, one more segment to go here in Inside Kennedy Football. The head coach, Kedrick Williams, joins me next.
have to go back and change it all. I would, I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's just a little moment. I could go back and change, could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Back on Inside Kennedy Football final segment of the week. The Eagles coming off a big win against Richfield, 41 to 28. They travel back home to Bloomington Stadium on Friday night to take on Mound West Honka. We'll have that game for you live on DEC TV at seven o'clock. Back for one more segment with the head coach, Kedrick Williams. What do you have to say about those two young men? First start with uh, Valiant Taylor, because I know he's the guy that you uh, are so glad that uh, continued football this year. You know, Valiant, that was one of the first things, conversations I had when I became the head coach. You know, Valiant wasn't sure of the future and what he was going to do. We had a great sit-down conversation. And I explained to him that, you know, it's your love, it's your passion. And I want that same passion and love that he had as a sophomore. You know, it goes back to when Valiant played right here at Valley View Middle School. I used to come over, his brother Hezekiah, he used to play for us at that time, led the number four in the state in tackles back then when he was a uh, junior. And even back then, he would leave school, and I, I'd go to my little brother. Well, let me go see your little brother. And it was funny because it was his big little brother. <laughs> and so even back then, me and Valiant just developed a relationship. And I'm just glad that they trusted me enough and believed in me enough to give football another shot. How about the freshman Marquez Monroe? I mean, obviously, we've seen what he can do on the field, but he just seems like a – really down-to-earth kid who just loves to play the game. What do you see from your perspective? Why has he been able to, to do so many great things already as a freshman? Well, that's another kid that I looked at very much so before he got to Kennedy. I knew he was. He was in the BAA football system. I knew of him. I went to games and I watched. I scouted him. I let him know that I was coaching at Kennedy. I wasn't the head coach yet, but mm -hmm. I was still on staff. And I just explained to him that he could do some great things in the future and he could change the program around. You know, it was based on his class and his effort level. So he bought again, another kid who bought into it, understood that we have four years together to turn this ship around over at the Eagles Nation. And I, again, I'm glad that kids are buying into the, the overall plan for success. Uh, they understand it's not a right now plan, but it's a plan over a period of time uh, to get these kids to being successful. What is that decision process like where you have such a, obviously he's a talented guy and he's a big kid yeah. for, being yeah. a freshman, but you yeah. still have to decide, I want to play this guy as a yeah. freshman. So is there a decision that goes in there or was it just that obvious that he needed to see the field? You know, it goes back to our mantra, Josh, best man plays. I don't care what class they're in. Mm -hmm. You know, if Bloomington, our school district would allow, I would bring eighth graders up. I would bring those eighth graders up and give them a shot at playing JV or varsity level if they had the skill and the physicality enough to do so. Uh, football is about your mindset. It is 99% mental. If we believe that success is mental, then we have to give everyone a shot, no matter their grade. So it just goes to our mantra and our belief over at Kennedy High School, the best person will play, despite your age. Right now, I've been at about four BAA football games this year, and I'm talking to those kids. I'm shaking hands with those future Eagles. And I'm letting them know over at Kennedy, you have a path to success. And that path can start as a, a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, or a senior. Mm -hmm. It's up to you where you want to start your path. Well, let's talk about this week's opponent yes. as you continue to ride some good momentum. Mound West Tonka, they're 3-0 and this year. Uh, looks like they're a team that can run and throw. What have you seen from your perspective? Obviously, the great start for them. They're yeah. undefeated, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a tough challenge for you guys. You know, the one thing I see them in, they're physical. They are physical. They're a downhill running team. Um, a lot of their positions, when you do the research on them, you see that multiple guys lead them in multiple areas. Their running back who runs also leads them in receiving yards. So it tells me he's an athlete. They like to put athletes in positions of success. Uh, the other thing with Mount West Tonka, uh, they have some new influx of uh, funds in their area, got a new stadium field, new, some new things. With that comes new kids, uh, new community. Uh, so that's one thing that community has really done a great job of supporting that football program and their coaching staff over there in that area. We know stopping the run is going to be key for them, for you guys on Friday, but you look back to the last six quarters, what you guys did against St. Anthony yeah. in the second half, containing their ground game. Obviously, the entire game against Richfield, yeah. they couldn't get anything going. 
that momentum building, stopping the run on defense, uh, that has to be big for you heading to, uh, to this game on Friday. Well, it is, but most of all, what's big for us, Josh, is the plan, to continue the plan. I will continue to say, in the state of Minnesota, you get nine games guaranteed. And in order to get that ninth, that 10th, that 11th game, you have to do your job the first eight of building a successful program. A success doesn't always end in wins and losses. Success determines how are we getting better. Week by week, are we getting better? Uh, so that's the thing I continue to preach to our kids. Don't focus on the wins and losses in life. And that's just a life lesson. You're going to win some things, you're going to lose some things. But success is determined on your effort level and how much you put into something. So that's the same thing I'm preaching this week. You know, Our success will be determined on how we play Mount West Tonka. One thing we are focused on this week is starting fast. Over the last two weeks, we've had offensive success in the second half, mm -hmm. in the second half football. We have to find a way to put points on the board in the first and second quarters. It's a four-quarter game, and we want to start winning four out of four quarters. Last one for you, Coach. You head back home. You had a great crowd uh, yes. open up your home schedule yes. a couple weeks ago. Yes. Uh, give a shout-out to the Kennedy fans. That you, I know you want to see them back on Friday. I do. Today's shirt says, fight till we can't fight no more. And that's for our student section. Our student section continues to fight with us and for us. Another shirt that we wear is called Win the Crowd. Win the Crowd is a uh, mocker from the Spartans uh, when Spartans had to go fight the Giants. Uh, it was the crowd that got him through it. So we teach our kids that same thing. It's our fan section. It's our community that gets us through. When they start cheering and they start getting up, getting loud, getting rowdy as a student section, and they start cheering against the other student section, well, we feel that energy. We love that energy. And that's why after each game, you've seen that we've gone over to the crowd and we've paid our crowd respect for giving us respect. Well, we hope it's another crowd on Friday. We'll be out there with you, Coach. Best of luck as you hope to win two in a row against uh, Mount Wicca. Yes, thank you, Josh. We appreciate the uh, opportunity. As always, thanks to Eastside Pride. Want to thank our community sponsor this week is Applebee's. We had a pancake breakfast there last weekend, so we want to continue to support our community. All right, well done, Coach. And again, we'll see you on Friday night. Please return home to take on Mound West Tonka Friday night. You can watch it live on CTV, or better yet, head on out and cheer on the Eagles in the Well, to wrap it up, another edition of Inside Kennedy Football. For our entire Chris Josh Powers, saying good night from our studios.